in Bonsoir. So tonight, what we're going to do is a tomahawk with these beautiful potatoes, zucchini, and yellow squash with tomatoes and garlic and zelle de Provence in there and seasoning and some onions. And we also added some garlic. So welcome and I will show you how easy it is to make this tonight. In no time you could put this together, have a beautiful presentation and entertain and have a wonderful evening. Don't forget to buy a nice bottle of red wine. I would recommend with a with this, a Côte d'Oron, uh, Chateau Neuf du Pape is excellent. Would go great with this meal. So we'll get into it right now. Okay, so we're gonna prepare my coating for this beautiful tomahawk. It's a small one. It's like just over two pounds, two point two. Um, that's just a few of us eating tonight. Uh, matter of fact, just two of us. But I'm going to show you how to make my coating. So I already basically threw a little bit of butter in there. I mean, maybe a uh, one tablespoon of butter and a good pinch of uh, parsley chopped. And uh, I'm going to add some garlic. I already added a little bit. I'm going to add a couple more cloves. Great tool, by the way. Um, this What this does is basically crushes the garlics, mixes the oils in it, and actually gives it the strongest flavor that garlic can have, which I want to coat my tomahawk here. So you just put it in there, press, and it's easy as that. Done. Now, if you don't have one of these things, what you can do is you can crush your garlic, put the garlic there, crush it with the blade, chop it, crush it, chop it, mix it, and then put it in there. But I find this tool wonderful. Can't tell you how much they cost. It's been a long time since I've had this. I don't know, long time. All right, so I'm gonna add a few more ingredients into my little mix here. Good pinch of pepper, don't be shy, maybe two. I'm gonna add a good amount of salt, and I will put it in my hand here so you can see about that much. And I'm gonna add, again, the Zelda Plus, because this is my style of doing one of the ways I do the tomahawk. It's not a French recipe, it's a Steve recipe. And then little knobs creak in there. Just a tad bit, not much, like a tablespoon or half a shot, however you want to call it. And then I'm going to put some honey in there. Not too much, about, I would say, a tablespoon, something in there. Okay, now what's very important is when you are doing this, you need to take your tomahawk out of the fridge and bring it to room temperature. So I would say about 40 minutes. And we did that. And I like just to keep the butcher paper on here. So I don't make too much of a mess. Usually, I use my hands. Now watch, I'm just going to mix this because I need to rub it and I pinch it. That's what I'm doing, I'm pinching it. Make sure your hands are clean. You can use gloves if you like. But, you know, it's like tossing a salad. It's better to use your hands. Mmm, I can smell that bourbon and that garlic and all that good stuff just... There, now I'm just gonna put that on there. And rub it. I want to rub it good. Just want to 
as much as I can get that in there. Uh, something I did also, is I tied this tomahawk to the rotisserie. And I'll show you that in a second. Not too complicated. Um, basically, I just want to hold it together. Because sometimes it will want to separate. Now make sure you get all the sides in there. Don't be afraid. It won't get hurt. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. And then I am going to let it sit here like this for another good 10 minutes. Because I just want everything to kind of pierce that. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how I did those knots. Basically, went around here, made a knot. Went around, came back here, made a knot, went over, made another knot, came over, made another knot. That's it. It's easier with two people, trust me, because you gotta get it tight. Uh, you know, extra finger is always good. And that's how we're gonna let this guy rest. Now, Well, not rust, but come just let it soak those juices. So I, I, I've let it come to room temperature for about 30 minutes. I'm going to let it uh, sit here for another 15 minutes, and then I will uh, I will uh, do my pierce my rod in there, and I will be ready to bring it over to the rotisserie. And if you don't have one of these rotisseries, they're amazing, but you can do it on the barbecue as well. Rotisserie is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So we'll come back when that has rested. I'll have that just regular olive oil is fine. Um, and uh, let's get started. So the garlic was really easy. You, what you want to do is just chop off the tip. Give it a little bang, and then it makes it easy just to peel off all the wrappings on that garlic. See how easy that is? Instead of fighting it, you just give it a little punch gently, and it'll come right off. There you go. So then what I did is I basically just sliced it and then I chopped it and then I just put it in there for later use. You just need maybe one or two garlics and that should be enough. So the key to doing this is that what you want to do, I like to cut off the tip if you want, you know, you don't have to. I do. And what we're going to do is we want to cut it so that it looks like a fan. And then we'll put the um, tomatoes, sliced tomatoes in there. And then we will, so you want to do it as thinly as possible. And that one's a little too thick. So I'm going to go back and come across. And I'm holding it with two hands. Be careful to keep Keep an eye on the blade. And coming across, a sharp knife really works well, much safer. And one more. I kind of like that. Okay, so then we're going to take that and we're going to spread it like that. You want to give it a good little push down there. and. That'll keep it open for you, a little trick. Oh, I had a, one little more in there. There we go. Oh, it broke. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. I'll show you how easy it is, though. So here's this yellow squash. I'm going to do the same thing, cut the tip. And I kind of find where the center is that is the most straight. 
So I want to do like this where it's curved. I try to hold it straight. I hope you can see that. All right, and then slice through. There we go. And if you cut it too thick, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. I'm trying to be even with it. I'm going to do like five or six slices of this. Be careful with your fingers. Last one, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to... There we go. Okay, let's see how that one turned out. Boom, 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 boom. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. So we're going to put it down here. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. And now we're going to do the tomatoes. And what you want to do is just... Uh, you can go either direction. Um, I think I will go lengthwise. And you want pretty thin, but not too thin, slices. And I will keep going here. Watch your fingers. There's one. Important to have a sharp knife, guys and ladies, or else it's not safe. It makes it a little dangerous to do this. Let's go. And let's uh, do one more slice there. Okay, so I got my basic ingredients. I got my garlic, got my pepper. Else. My salt. This is actually from the south of France, from a near a fortified city called Egmont, which is in the Camargue region of France, which is just a beautiful, beautiful area. There's flamingos over there, and it's just incredible. But anyways, now we real quickly. I'm gonna spin my olive oil and I'm not gonna be bashful. I'm just gonna throw that on it. There we go. Oh. There. Now I'm gonna season. tricky thing is make sure you season all of them. So it's okay to get your fingers in there. Now we're going to put some salt and season well. Don't be shy. And then I'm going to get Zelle de Provence. Throw that in there. About that much. You know, I don't give measurements because I want you to not be afraid of the ingredients. You know, you can overpower, but I think it's hard to do. Now I'm just gonna take my chopped garlics, which by the way, when you chop them, they're not as, my, uh, as strong as it, well, when you chop them or slice them, they're not as strong as if you crush them. Because then you mix the oils inside the garlic which makes it stronger all right now i'm just gonna take my fingers get them nice and rub it in on each one just making sure i have garlic that i'm rubbing in as well that flavors it and taking care not to break anymore like i did <laughs> So now we're going to take the tomatoes. Look how easy this is. And I'm just going to put them in there. In between. And you know, I should have started on this side. Yeah, let me, 
Let me do this. It'll be a little easier to see, probably, I hope. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to take these, put it in between. Boom, boom, boom. This guy, oh, more in here. Let's take it in there. Push this guy in there. All right. Stick him in there. Beautiful. Now, and there you have it. Zucchini, tomato, garlic. And then we'll put it under the rotisserie with the tomahawk. Okay, now we're just going to get these potatoes. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to basically split them. Throw them in a bowl. I'm going to fill it with water and salt. I'm going to let it soak. Oh, for about 30 minutes. And then... I will take them out, dry them off, make sure you pat dry them, and then I'm going to put some olive oil on it, and then some seasoning, a little bit of garlic, and I'm going to put it in with the squash and the tomatoes in between there. That'll be really nice. And then we will also add in our tray the onion ball. And that will be it for the tray. I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, so I washed my onions, my bulb onions here. And I cut the end, but you know, I like the green and under the rotisserie, it makes it pretty. And I'm just gonna basically, oh, a little more, there we go. Cut the ends off. If I wanted to, I could slice it in half. Um, but I think I'm going to keep it this way. I'm just going to stir it a little bit in my olive oil and garlic and seasoning I used for the potatoes here. Just coat them. There we go. And I will stick them right in there. Or maybe, you know what, I'll start it with about like that. And it looks nice. So here we go. So I put my potatoes, which is the, the thickest thing that needs to cook. The more delicate stuff I put towards the back. The onions are going to need some cooking. And the more delicate towards the back. Now we're ready to get the tomahawk ready. I'm going to show you guys how I put this guy on. So what I do is I take a, before I, you know, put it in there, I take a look at what's the best possible way. And I size it up. And what I want to do is get as close to the bone as possible. So this looks like a good angle to me. And what I'm going to do, so that I get as close to the bone as possible, I'm going to come like down. And I'm going to put it right between my strings. Be careful not to destroy that. And then I'm going to need a little oomph to get it in there. And just push it. There we go. I heard it click. Oh, that's okay. It came a little too high. Let's do it that way. 
There, not the end of the world. Okay, now what's important is that I do not want my bone to stick out too far. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here and loosen this guy. And I think I want to come in more. And you see how I want to make sure that it does not suppress that. I probably, this is probably as far as I want to go. I got enough room here. And I'm going to flip this. Now I could go like this, which is fine. It doesn't pierce the meat, but it's going to hold it in place. You notice? One, two. I don't need a fish basket for that. That way I can use my heel sit. Now here, I could go like this as well, and that pierce it. But you see how that would be loose? So I'm thinking it would probably be better if I do pierce it so I have something that keeps everything together. And this is just what I, based on the last tomahawk I've done, worked the best for me. Look at that. Look at that tomahawk. Now if you notice, I'm just going to test drive it. I'm going to turn on, make sure it clears, and it does. So this is the perfect... Look at that. Right over it. Here are the vegetables ready. So we are ready to go. I got a new toy. Um, it's a wireless uh, temperature thermometer. And it works with Bluetooth and with my phone with an app. I'm just going to stick this guy all the way in, and you know what? It's perfect because this rotates, and it'll keep the temperature for me. Now, one other thing I'm going to do before I get going, I'm taking some garlic with, with it unpeeled. I don't know if you can see that, but it's unpeeled. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it in there, close to the front. What's that's going to happen? It's going to roast it, and it's going to create this beautiful mild garlic. And then when I serve it, you can just pierce, you know, just pinch that, and the garlic comes out, and it's roasted garlic. It's wonderful. Beautiful. All right, so what I'm going to do, and by the way, I have a special mention. Um, I want to thank uh, the director of technical services, Michael Trigo, for coming out and fine tuning my uh, rotisserie. So he saw my video and said, 30 seconds? No, that's too much. Shoot should be about 10 seconds. And we fine tuned it and look at that. I don't have to wait. So what I am going to do is I'm going to sear it. So I want that as hot as I can. So a Steve tip. When you're using rotisserie and you want to sear it, if you notice, I stopped it. And what I do is I let it just sear one side, and then maybe like two or three minutes, and then I let it put it, put it on and flip it to the other side and sear it to three minutes until I see that it's nice and seared. I basically seared my tomahawk, and I'm liking the color here. So I am going to put it back to rotisserie. And now what I'm going to do, and this is what I love about this, I want to slow down the cooking. But I want my vegetables to have that full heat. 
So how do I do that? I want to slow down the cooking on this, because, you know, if I wanted to, I could get this done in 30, 30 minutes, probably, get it completely cooked. But I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to lower the heat. I'm just going to pull it out one latch, so look, that's completely in, and one latch, and there you go. So that was my timer, just to make sure I didn't over sear it. But it's beautiful. So now I'm just going to slow things down and let my vegetables do the work. I'm going to push my vegetables in. Boom. I'm just going to, here, let me do this. So you can see, there's the tomahawk, and there's the vegetables, and I'm just going to push it in, push it in, so that we get potatoes cooking really good. And look how beautiful that is. So beautiful. All right, we'll be back when uh, it's almost done. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to add a little vegetable broth. Oh, let's see here. I just want to keep those vegetables nice and moist, nice and moist. So I'm not going to be shy. I'm just going to put all this in. There we go. There's the juices. Beautiful. Once in a while, stir your vegetables. We you need to add more broth. I don't think you'll need to, but you could. And slowly cook that tomahawk, which is going to be beautiful. And I love this probe in there. I wish I could show you the app working, but it's. I use my my phone for a camera, video camera, so I can't show it to you, but. I'll let you know how it works out. So as you can see, we're starting to get some good color here. So what we did, we started opposite of the rotisserie chicken. We started with a very high heat to sear it, and then we lowered the temperature. So now, and I pulled it back up one slot. So what that does is that slowly cooking my tomahawk. But look at the vegetables. They're cooking nicely. They're browning. They're coming nicely. Very nicely. And the smell is going throughout the house. And I wish, gosh, I wish you could smell it. You know, one really neat thing about this rotisserie, I want to show you, there's no splashes, no, it's so well engineered. Everything is captured. The only thing I have to clean is the tray in the spike. Okay, look at this. We've reached an internal temperature of 125 degrees. Quick tip for you guys. So, I got that temperature from that Bluetooth, which is amazing, using it on a rotisserie, because there's you know, no wire. I had the traditional wire one before. And this is wonderful. So, quick tip, I'm taking a other thermometer, and I'm just going to check my potatoes. They should be ready. Oh yeah, this one's at 185. I'm going to check the ones on the inside. Yes, they're all done. Beautifully. You can also just use the fork. It doesn't clean, you know, it's ready. But, this is a quick way 
to just check it. So here we are. So I am going to turn off the heat. I am going to turn off the rotisserie. And I'm going to pull this guy out. One more. And I'm just going to let it rest for 15 minutes. And then I'll be ready to take her down and carve it, serve my vegetables, serve my dinner. It's all ready. Now, if you wanted to keep everything warm, just leave it in there. It'll stay warm for a while. This is cast iron. So I found it that it retains that heat for a good while. So, I mean, you're safe to, you know, probably wait and uh, let it rest for 15 minutes and maybe another 10 minutes and it'll still be warm. And there you have it. Bonne soirée, bon appétit. Oh, I forgot to show you the close up. So here's the close up of the vegetables. Look at all that. The juices are dripping in there. All that beautiful gold juice going into those potatoes, zucchinis, tomatoes, and garlic and onions. What a beautiful thing. So, bonsoir and good evening.